Right, so here you see that there is an isolated conducting sphere. This is not the first time you've seen this sphere before, right? You have seen this before in chapter 17, where we talk about the electric fields outside, inside the sphere. And then we talk about the relationship between the electric field strength if we put two metal spheres. So you're sufficiently leveled up for mu for me to tell you that if, let's say, I connect this to a very high voltage, uh, normally we label this as EHT la in the in a normal circuit diagram, but EHT stands for extra high tension, which is what all of us are feeling a bit right now in the progress of our syllabus. Yes, extra high tension. Anyway, so let's say this is positive. This is probably a few kilovolts la at the very least, and this is negative. When you are talking about extra high tension, you better be grounding your circuit. If not, stray sparks will fall around, catastrophe will happen. So because this is connected positive, right, what will happen is that the electrons on this originally neutral sphere will be like, hey, positive charge, hey. So the electrons will begin to leave the sphere, and when the electron leaves the sphere, what will happen is that the sphere will become positively charged. And as we all know, the charges tend to distribute itself very evenly along the surface because they want to stay as far away from each other as possible. Right? So we know the charges will distribute evenly on the surface. And the larger the extra high tension, this value of V here, the larger it is, the more charge I can store. So from why? Yeah? Nah, because the definition of capacitance, Q, is equal to CV. So the V here will be the potential difference at the extra high tension, the few kilovolt. So you will expect, just based on this, that the graph will be a straight line passing through the origin, where the gradient is the capacitance. Okay, sometimes if they want to annoy you and flip the axis, I hope you know what to do, okay? So from here, you would you might think of one thing. Hmm. If the charge stored here is Q, and the potential difference is V, I know that I know the value of V on the surface of this sphere, right? Because what we are doing is we are connecting the extra high tension on the surface of the conducting sphere. So the electrons will begin to travel until the potential at the surface is the same as the extra high tension. Same idea as a parallel plate capacitor. Same idea as your potential meter. Current will flow until the potential is equal. So right now, the potential here on the surface is also V. Surface. So let's write that down. Potential at the surface is also V. So if the potential of the surface is at V, and if you remember our previous chapter, what's the equation for V? Ah? Something, something, KQ over R squared. Wait, no squared. KQ over R. Uh, where is R again? And R is the radius law. The radius of our beautiful sphere. Here to here is your R. Okay. So then... Uh, you might be thinking, okay, I'm just going to use big R here. Okay. So then you might be thinking, mm, I know Q is equal to CV. I know that V is equal to KQ over R. Can substitute. Uh? Can be substitute. So from here, I will substitute and I will have... Um, change color a bit. Q is equal to C KQ over R. Okay, so this 2Q is essentially the same thing, all right? The Q on the left is the charge stored on the sphere. The Q on the right is the charge stored on the sphere that causes the potential at the surface. So they will cancel out and at the end of the day, you will get C is equal to R over K. But wait a second. You know, because let me let me cross out the Q for you. Okay, Q is cancelled out, and then I'll get C is equal to R over K by rearranging. So let let us recall that this K is actually a short form writing of one over four pi epsilon, not your relativity of free space. Ah. so hence this C can be written as. Nah, I flip over. So this is 
4 pi epsilon naught r because 1 over k will be 4 pi epsilon naught r. So this is the capacitance of a charge isolated conducting sphere. Okay, so this is the capacitance for an isolated conducting sphere. This means any sphere can quote unquote store charge. Look, miss, is this a case of storing charge? Um, if you look at just the perspective of the metal sphere, then yes. Lah. But you understand where did the electron go? The electron actually go to ground. Uh, where is ground? <laughs> ground is earth. The earth is a giant charge reservoir. So you can put a lot of charge there, the earth is fine. You can take a lot of charge from the earth, the earth is fine. Okay, so technically it's debatable, but for parallel plate, we don't store charge. Huh? So here you can see this as charge stored or any metal sphere, you are able to place charge on it. Okay, so we'll write that down about what happens to the charges when we place them on the metal sphere, just to remind ourselves about the charge distribution. Okay, so just to remind ourselves that when you have a metal sphere like this, the charge will distribute on the whole surface, so you have the same potential difference across every single point on the circuit. Whereas for an insulator, the charges are trapped in the sphere because the charges are not as mobile in the insulator. So you have different potential difference on different parts of the surface. Okay, so the basics of chapter 18 that you need to know before you tackle some questions and before we connect this in a series and parallel circuit is uh, how a capacitor functions inside a very simple circuit, the charging and discharging mechanism, why capacitor is said to store energy but not charge. Uh, some common users of capacitor, sometimes they'll just ask you to suggest uh, in paper four, maybe one or two suggestions. No big deal. Um, then how to define capacitance, which is the ratio of charge stored on one plate to the potential difference across the capacitor. And also the idea that when we have an isolated conducting sphere, it is also like a capacitor where it can uh, allow you to store some charge on it, store in inverted comma. Okay, so this derivation has came out several times. You should check out the past years. And uh, I think that's the end of this part. Second part, we will look at capacitors in series and parallel and derive an expression for work done. Because we talk about energy, uh, you store energy. So what is the equation? How much energy is stored in the capacitor? All that in the future video. I'll see you there. If you find this helpful, please share this with your friend. Like and subscribe our videos. Bye-bye.